Hi, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to take a deep dive into HelioMaker, which is software designed specifically for guiding on the sun. It can also be used for lunar and planetary guiding, but my focus today is going to be on using it for the sun. Up until now, I've been using my high node solar guider, which is an extra hardware device, which is placed on the telescope and guides on the sun. It works pretty well, except I had a problem during the last total solar eclipse when it went berserk right just before totality and I had to scramble to recover. So it didn't do very well when there's just a tiny amount of the limb left. The other issue with the high node solar guider is it's now out of production. So it really isn't a viable alternative for most people unless you can find one on the used market. HelioMaker is software which is designed to run on Windows on SharpCap Pro and it uses adjacent software called PHD2 Solar. The PHD2 Solar is a special version of PHD2 designed for the sun, and that software is free. HelioMaker you have to pay for. They have a one year and a perpetual year license available. Here's a brief summary of how to set up HelioMaker. Note that HelioMaker has built-in help with the F1 key. The embedded documentation covers how to use the instrument and set it up step by step. Connect your camera to a USB port on your PC. Connect the USB connection on your mount to another port on your PC. Ensure you have the right port selected, for example, COM3, for the mount. First, close any running instances of SharpCap and PHD2. In HelioMaker main screen, Link both buttons, SharpCap and PHT2, should initially be red. Click the SharpCap link button and wait for it to turn green. SharpCap should open. Click the PHD2 button and wait for it to turn green. Set the mount's tracking rate to match your target, in this case, solar, for best guiding performance. Ensure you are polar aligned. Frame and focus your target. Capture any required calibration frames. I usually do flats when I'm doing the sun. With both programs turned on and linked, you can select Find and Track, then choose the mode that matches your target. You'll generally be using either the full disk mode, if you see the entire full disk of the sun, or the surface feature mode, if you want to focus on a prom or a filament or a sunspot. You can use the brightness slider to improve the visibility. It affects the display only. In the main screen, configure your imaging session, target name and folder, frames per cycle and sequence length, which helps you figure out how you want your time lapse to work, the interval, the time from one start of one cycle to the next, the continuous guiding toggle, and you may want to optionally lock these in advanced settings to avoid accidental changes. When setting up PHD2, ensure you have the special solar version, not the normal version. The solar PHD2 version is free. HelioMaker does not work with the standard PHD2. If you're only using PHD2 for solar, then you can leave instance number at one. However, if you're using the normal PHD2 for night guiding and a solar version for HelioMaker, it's recommended to leave the night one as instance one and make the HelioMaker version number two. The first time you use HelioMaker, you'll need to create an equipment profile. Be sure to select the virtual planetary camera, not the camera you may be using. The virtual planetary camera is used when SharpCap's imaging camera is shared for both imaging and guiding. Note that users can select the physical camera in PHD2 when running a dedicated guide scope and guide camera. This will decouple exposure times between imaging and guiding. For example, in the lunar eclipse video you'll see shortly, the main camera used 10 to 30 second exposures while the guide camera ran at 50 milliseconds and a much higher gain, which helped keep guiding stable on a dark moon. Find and track has several settings. You'll never use the star detection mode in the daytime. The crescent and disk modes are intended for solar disks or moon phases that are entirely visible in the screen with margin around them. Do not use them if you can only see part of the limb of the sun. 
Choose the middle tool on the right side, approximate coverage, then use the bottom tool to snap it into position. If you're doing a longer focal length close-up of a sunspot or filament, then use the feature tracking mode. You can either then choose a region of interest or a spot. In the case of poor calibration results, it's almost always due to imperfect polar alignment, which is admittedly difficult to do in the daytime. However, my experience has been that even when my polar alignment was poor, the Helio Maker still tracked well. When my polar alignment was way off, then of course it had trouble, as you might expect. Ensure to enter the correct focal length, taking into account any bar lows you might have in the optical train or those inside a quark. I want to say a few words about doing solar animations. The following is applicable to doing solar animations, but not directly relevant to HelioMaker. Even if HelioMaker tracks the sun perfectly, doing solar animations is not set and forget. Three things will happen as time progresses. First, as the sun climbs high in the sky, you'll be looking through less air mass, so the image will get slowly brighter. A perfect histogram at the outset will likely turn into a waste over saturated one if the exposure or gain is not occasionally trimmed to keep the histogram where you want it. Second, your telescope will heat up and this will minutely change the focal plane from the objective to the camera. It might only be microns or submillimeters, but it's enough to soften formerly sharp focus. This means your perfect focus at the outset will slowly become softer and softer over time. Third, etalons are affected by heat. The longer they are in the path of the sun, the hotter they will get and the more off-band you will get. So you need to adjust the etalon periodically to stay well in band, unless your etalon is remotely controlled, like with a Lunt PC-USB controller or a solar spectrum heater cooler. Best practices in this case call for you to check on the image every 15 to 20 minutes while doing a time lapse and adjust exposure gain, fine focus, and etalon tuning if necessary. I tested HelioMaker in three solar configurations. First, with my Lunt 100 MT at f7 with a 701 millimeter focal length. This worked extremely well. Once, when I accidentally left the focal length at 1120, when it should have been 701, it still guided perfectly. Second example is with my Tech 160 FL at native F7, which is 1120 millimeters focal length. Third and most often, I used a very challenging arrangement with my Tech 160 FL and a Bader 4X telecentric for a focal ratio of F28 and a focal length of 4480 millimeters. You'll see that even when the mount was not quite properly aligned, and the guiding warned of errors, I still got good results. I was unable to test it on the moon, but here's a video provided by HelioMaker showing the guiding working across a recent eclipse. Overall, I was very impressed with HelioMaker. I had a couple of startup missteps that were quickly corrected with their support, and then it worked reliably unless my polar alignment was bad. It's replaced my high node guider as my go-to method for solar guiding. For my subscribers, I worked out a special deal. If you purchase HelioMaker before February 1st, 2026, you'll get a 20% discount if you use my code AZASTRO at checkout. If you purchase the software on February 1st or afterwards, 2026, then you'll get a 5% discount. I hope you found this review helpful, and thanks for watching the channel.